Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Now, for those who don't know me, my name is Sharon Gibson, and I am the Mayor of La Trobe City Council. I'd really like to thank you um, for joining us today via Zoom. Sorry, it's not in public but or in person, but as you know, we can't do that at the moment. And this is all about the community listening posts regarding the planning permits, applications submitted to the, that will be submitted to the Minister for Planning for the Delburn Wind Farm and Associated Terminal Station. Um, before we start the session, I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting here today on the traditional land of the Bracklong clan of the, or Bracklong people, sorry, of the Gunai Kurnai Nation and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. You can tell I'm home and that's the dog. I'm sorry about that. Um, that's why it's sometimes good to be in the chamber. Um, great watchdog though. Look, and I do pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I apologise for that. We do have a number of councillors here to listen to you all tonight. We have the Deputy Mayor. Um, it's all right, the screen keeps on changing. Councillor Darren Howe. We have Councillor Kelly O'Callaghan. We have Councillor Dan Clancy. We have Councillor Graham Middlemiss and Councillor Melissa Ferguson I saw pop up as well. Um, now, we also have our CEO, Mr. Stephen Piacenti, and he will um, be pretty good on the, um, the buttons. Now, as you know why we're here tonight, and I, I, I truly do thank you for attending, but I'd like, I need to let you know that this session is being recorded so that we can later post this to YouTube via our Facebook page for those who may not have been able to, to come in tonight, um, but they, they want to watch it back later. So that will be done. I encourage you all to have your camera turned on. However, acknowledge that if your preference is not to do so, uh, that is okay. But when you speak, would you please put your camera on there? If you don't want it on normally, that's okay. But when you speak, would you please turn your camera on? Now, the purpose uh, of this is, as you know, council is not making a decision tonight about whether we are supportive or not um, to the Delburn Wind Farm. The purpose of this session is to provide councillors with an opportunity to hear your thoughts about the proposed Delburn Wind Farm and understand the key issues from the community's perspective. We are truly here to listen to you. We would ask that if addressing councillors, you try not to spend too much time going over the same issues that have already been raised, as we have quite a number of speakers um, that we have here tonight. So if you could please be mindful of that. Now, as some of you may or may not know, the Minister of Planning is the responsible authority. He's the one who will decide whether this goes through or not. Um, he has the authority for assessing planning permit applications for wind farms. So in fact, Council is treated just like any of you if you are going to put a submission in. No different. My understanding is that submissions to the proposal close on the 18th of August 2021 and Council will hold a special council, an open special council meeting prior to this date and consider our, our options, oh, not our options, our stance. I encourage everyone who has an interest in the proposal, whether that be supportive or not, that they actually write a submission and lodge it with DELP by the due date. So just be mindful that it's the 18th of August, so that's not long. Councils are really keen to hear from you and getting your feedback on the proposal to help inform us 
in the preparation of our council submission and that is the purpose of tonight's session solely. So now our CEO will go through some house, housekeeping rules and then I will start um, bringing on the speakers. Oh, sorry, before I do that, sorry. Um, now, the councillors are, are here at the moment with their cameras on, but they will actually take the, the cameras off afterwards. So for those of you who are learning about Zoom like I am, they will drop down. So all of you will go up on the screen. So you'll be seen more than us. When we're not here to be seen, we're actually here to listen. Thank you. Okay, Mr. CEO, would you fire away, please? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So thanks everyone for joining. So as the Mayor said, I'm Stephen Pearsini, CEO of Latrobe City. Um, the, uh, the Mayor touched on this um, session being recorded, so it will be made available to the other councillors who aren't in attendance as well tonight, just for your information. So I do know that some of you may have already written to council providing feedback um, on your on the proposal, Dublin Wind Farm. We will collate those as offices and they will be, along with emails and letters, will be provided to all the councillors to help inform, as the Mayor said, um, the council as part of any submission it might wish to make. Um, and But... We would also encourage you to send your submissions to DELP, as the Mayor said, and the Planning Minister is the responsible authority. Just want to reiterate that. Um, if you do have questions about how to make a submission to the Planning Minister or having a te technical difficulties um, tonight, through you can use the chat function. Now, the chat function tonight has been set up to be able to provide uh, chat to or messages to officers. Uh, we have had past experience where we've used the chat function in these sorts of forums where uh, somebody might make a comment and then other people try to respond to that and it was a, a fairly distracting so in, in terms of being able to provide the councils with the best opportunity to to hear from you directly um, that's how we set the chat function up tonight um, so if you do want to learn more about the uh, wind farm project i'm sure that a lot of you would already well across it um, and the assessment of the planning application though i would encourage you to visit the uh, Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning's website. And there's a link on our website to that as well for those of you who might not be aware of that. And if you have any questions, you can ask them directly through a link on that website as well. So just as the Mayor said, uh, tonight is about hearing from you and getting your feedback to inform that uh, submission. Uh, so I will go through some general rules, as the Mayor said. Um, we will um, uh, be um, wanting you to ensure that um, behaviour is appropriate. That's a key thing for us tonight. There will be differing views. We understand that. Um, but we want we ask everybody to be respectful in terms of providing those views and giving people the opportunity to speak. So um, just in terms of the, the general rule around that. So we do understand, obviously, virtual meetings aren't as good as the mayor said as being in the room. They can be quite challenging and it does make it a little bit harder, but um, we've tried to set this uh, process up so we can, as I said, the councils can hear from each of you um, tonight who have registered to speak. And also there'll be a number of people who won't want to speak, they just want to be uh, able to listen to the conversation. Um, so when people did register tonight, we asked whether, importantly, any of the people who are registering for them to declare whether they're attending on behalf of an authority or organisation, that's something we learned from another previous session. Um, and to date, there's no one who has declared that they're attending on behalf of the proponent. So I just want to make that clear, the Dalburn Wind Farm. There is a representative from HVP who said they'd registered that they don't wish to speak. So they'll be sitting just having a listen. I think we have 20 speakers tonight um, who've registered. And hopefully they all are able to attend. Um, and the way, as a mayor sort of touched on, I think that each speaker will be provided with three minutes to provide uh, some commentary. And then should the councillors wish, um, they might wish to ask some questions of that. There won't be, I don't think, for every speaker questions, as I said, um, it will be an opportunity that's available to the council. So uh, when you do speak, we ask that um, you turn your camera on if you can um, and unmute yourself and then uh, speak. And so after uh, after that, as I said, the councillors may ask some questions. Um, one of the things that uh, has been raised is um, uh, that some people are seeking council to make a, a statement tonight about their position. As the mayor said, that's not the purpose of tonight. It's really is the purpose of hearing from um, the community. Um, and if there are issues that have already been raised, um, obviously you're, you're welcome to reiterate those. But um, if somebody has already commented on things that you'd like to say very in a similar fashion, you may wish to, to raise other points, I suppose is my point. 
Um, those who didn't register register to speak at tonight's session, um, because we did have a, obviously a limit in terms of the number of people, I think we've been able to accommodate those that did speak, but you can still make your views known to council. And as I said, a copy of all correspondence will be provided with councillors. Um, uh, any correspondence that officers have already received expressing views on the matters, as I said, will also be provided to councillors. So I do have a quick slideshow. Hopefully most people by now would be used to using Zoom. But I'll just for those that are, that are uninitiated um, in the use, uh, by the look of um, everybody that's joined the screen, I hope that's um, they're able to use. Uh, so I'll just share quickly uh, for people in terms of the the functions that are available in the view option. Just starting up there, um, you can choose gallery view. So some might have that set differently. Gallery view lets you see all the speakers in one go or as many as possible, and then you be able to, to um, also slide across the number of screens given the number of people we have. So that's a, a handy tip. Um, you can choose view option to change the screen layout. Um, uh, when in presentation mode being displayed, um, you, there's un untick the side by side mode so you, you can actually see both at once. But the, one of the, in terms of when we move back out of this presentation, you choose the gallery view is the best option. Um, down the bottom, you'll see, and we've blown this up, um, there's a mute option. You can tick that off when you need to speak and start video. So they're the two options down the bottom and the chat function. So they're probably the primary ones gallery view, and obviously for those that need to speak. Um, just uh, choose the unmute and un and start your video, um, as I said. So uh, those, that, if you do need help, put it in the chat functions down the bottom, it's one of the ones to find, and send us a message and we'll um, see if we can provide you with an assistance. So I'll stop sharing that, Madam Mayor. Um, the, as a touch on it, I just do hope that people treat each other with respect, give everybody the opportunity to speak uh, with somebody else speaking, don't speak over the top of them. Um, and so if, if uh, it does get a little bit out of hand, I have the power um, to uh, put somebody in the waiting room. I hope we don't get to that point. I'm sure everybody will be respectful, but uh, with uh, like a, a physical room, I don't have to escort anybody out, but um, we do have the option of um, putting somebody into the waiting room or ejecting them for the meeting. So I'm sure that's not going to occur. It hasn't been the case in any other meetings, but um, just want to let you know that. Um, so um, there are a number of people who want to indicate they'd like to address councillors. There might be some that need assistance, so just let us know. There are people in the Yanar Hall. I think uh, Karen um, had mentioned some of the speakers weren't there yet, so I'll just check with her. We were going to start with them. Um, so I'm going to just check oh, with you, Karen, okay. whether um, the first speaker who was listed is actually in the hall or uh, not. Are you there, Karen? Oh, I've lost Karen. Is anyone in the hall? <laughs> Yes, hi, please. We're here. Um, we're just double checking. Um, um, but it looks like there's nobody here at the moment. So um, everyone that's here is just listening. So. Okay. If, if that's the case, then I'll go straight into the Zoom ones. And when they come, if you can let me know. Over to you, Madam Thank you. No worries. Okay. Um, that being the case, the, we have a, a number of speakers that are doing it via Zoom, not in the, the room. So the first speaker is Alicia Teska. Alicia, are you here, please? Yes, I am. Oh, great. Now, you have three minutes, Alicia, um, to speak. Um, so when the, the time's up, if you... Um, I, I will tell you, unless you've already finished. Now, are you able to turn your camera on, please? Uh, yeah, just a minute. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Okay, Alicia, there you go. If you'd like to start your um, what you'd like to say to us, please. Okay, sure. Um, thank you for um, organising this meeting this evening. It's much appreciated. Um, I had some difficulty joining. I've only just joined a few minutes ago. I haven't received a um, Zoom link. I'm not quite sure what happened. Um, look, I, I have a concern about the um, proposal. I have some significant concerns about the appropriateness of this proposal. Uh, in particular, I'm concerned about how it um, 
will guarantee community safety. Um, and, and I'm just wondering about the, the comments that the Royal Commission made about the um, need for the La Trobe City Council to review the planning scheme um, to ensure that timber plantations don't pose an ongoing threat to the exposed coal faces of the Hazelwood Open Cut Mine. I'm wondering um, what steps council has taken in the seven years since the Hazelwood Mine Fire to address that concern that was um, raised strongly within the Royal Commission report. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, really uh, that that is my main concern. There's a lithium battery proposal. I don't know if a battery storage facility is actually uh, an approved use within the special use overlay. Um, I understand that electricity generation and transmission is an approved use, but there doesn't seem to be any comment um, on any of the um, references that I've accessed about battery, about electricity storage. And putting a lithium battery facility in a pine plantation next to a substation as well um, and an open pit mine and a highway and thousands of people. I, I have huge, huge concerns. And as a member of Doctors for the Environment Australia, I would like council to respond to those concern, concerns. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> pity you, you made it in late, Alicia, because the purpose of tonight is um, to listen to you, but also we're not the planning authority. So all your concerns, while they might be very, very valid or, or not, uh, I'm, I'm not here to, to make that. But we, this is all about the... Um, your concerns about concerns or your um, your belief in the the wind farm and at the end of the day all those concerns you have you need to put in your submission to DELP because it will be the planning minister who actually decides this we will be doing a submission just like you so does that explain it a bit better for you or not uh, look, I think that covers some of the issues that I've raised. Thank you. But uh, the, the most outstanding issue that remains unanswered that council does have the power to respond to is what steps council has taken in response to the release of the Royal Commission report, uh, which was very, very specific about the steps that it required council to take. Um, I have not had a response to that um, question. And I don't see why council is unable to answer that question. That's okay. Now, we have got officers here at the moment. So your um, all of that will be collated and we will get back to you as soon as possible because I suggest that we have got your contact details, so we will get that back to you as soon as possible. So when you put your submission in, you can include um, anything you want in relation to that concern in your submission. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Um, Councillors, do you have any questions for Alicia, please? Okay. No, 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 no questions. But if they, if those questions are, of Alicia's are written down, then we can follow up. So thank you, Madam Mayor. No worries. Okay. Nothing from me. No worries. Now, I, I can't see councillor. I can only see four of you on here. So the only one I can't see is councillor Ferguson. So uh, Melissa, if you've got a question and you're showing me I can't see you so it's back um, on I just got oh, I thought we had sorry. to take our screen off so that the other people went up to the top. oh no it's all right I couldn't oh. even see your box <laughs> okay I'm here so, sorry <laughs> um yeah no that's fine um yeah I think when those concerns are forwarded and they can be replied to for people's submissions I think that will be good yes mm. now uh, thank you Thanks. um so any councillor have a, a question for Alicia 
No. Okay. But before we go, Alicia, um, Mr. CEO, when the questions are raised tonight, will we send it out to the whole so everybody gets the answers to the questions? Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. What um, we will do, obviously, we've got a recording of this, so we can go back over questions that are asked tonight. So most uh, there, there might be questions, I think, that come up tonight that form some themes. We'll certainly be putting those into a report to council around the, the questions that were raised as part of the themes regarding a submission, um, and that will that would be made publicly available. So um, at this stage, probably the, the best approach in terms of collating all of those as part of that process, I think. Um, if there's specific questions that, uh, in this example, that Alicia has raised as part of the submission to us already, um, we can take those on notice as you touched on and get back to all that. Right. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Alicia. Thank you. Okay, next person we have is Dan Caffrey. Dan, I can't see you on my screen, but when you start speaking, you'll come up. Um, are you there? And are you ready to speak, please? Might be a very quick meeting. Okay, Dan, can you hear me? Oh, sorry, Dan Caffrey. I was going to say, Madam Mayor, there's only one yes. Dan on my list, which is Councillor Dan Clancy. Yes, yeah, all that. Um, I've got him on my list as Zoom for a speaker. Um, sorry, I meant on the participant list. So unless they have his names under a different name, it doesn't. Uh, okay. Yep. All right. So, can I ask that if he does come in, you let me know, and I, I'll put him back on. Okay. Next one is Emma McGregor. Emma, are you here, please? Oh, yes. Oh, thank yes, you, Emma. Fine. All <laughs> right. No worries. If you'd like to start speaking to us, we would like to listen. Oh, I just wanted to note that I was a part of the Latrobe community panel, um, that consultation we did, which was absolutely wonderful by Latrobe. City, thank you for listening to the community and and I just really noticed during that I thought I was um, a bit solo in that um, but clean green energy creation was an overwhelmingly popular vision for the valley um, and that was quite a wide range of people from all sorts of backgrounds and I also live very close to this proposed project and I can't find any serious negatives. I have a couple of questions about the re-veg, um, but that will be directed towards OSME themselves, um, just because they have to clear some area. I think most of it might be in plan, but there might be some, there is some native to it, yeah. So um, yeah, I just, that's, I really was quite surprised by how many people throughout the Latrobe Valley really want to clean up and get our image better, bring tourism, and this is a wonderful project for all of those reasons. No worries. Thank you very much for your input, Emma. Councillors, do you have any questions? Oh, I take it, no. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, thank you very much, Emma. Thank all right. You. Next person we have is Carolyn Balek. Is it Balek? Is that how yes. we say your surname? Yes, Balek. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Balek. No so worries. I'm here with my husband, David, and together Hello. we are opposing um, the Delburn Wind Farm. We live within a two kilometre range of several of the towers. Um, we will be writing to the planning minister with our concerns. Um, I would note that there are a range of concerns that we have, but given the time tonight, I would just like to touch on the most pressing of those. As a health professional myself, I am very concerned about the effects from particularly uh, the noise that's given by the wind towers, and that leads to sleep disturbance and a range of health associated effects. So we are aware and trying to follow the evidence that's being generated 
um, into particularly sleep studies. So the University of Adelaide is currently undertaking a study. The results are not yet known. And yet on their website, they are expressing a lot of concerns about the ill health effects that result from disturbed sleep from wind farms. Now, a lot of the evidence that's also available is from uh, wind towers that are 80 metres high, but I understand that these are significantly higher than that. And so the effects are simply multiplied through. So as a, as a new resident in the area, and, and my husband, as yep. we are new residents, we, we're just really expressing our concern about what we've now moved into the area to, to face. Yeah, and also the sheer number of towers. I mean, I believe it's going to be 33 in that fairly concentrated area. So you can magnify the effects of one tower. Um, Across terms, the region. Yeah, in terms of the noise and the, the um, psychological effects. Also, there's the um, potential effects on the wildlife. There's a lot of bird life around um, the area. And we're just concerned, particularly given the size of the blades and the size of the towers, um, what impact it's going to have on the wildlife and the bird life particularly. There's also significant visual impact and we think that the report that was prepared by Jacobs really undersold the visual impact for the community and that in in essence we've moved from the city to the country and now we'll be living next to high-rise towers mm. and the irony is not lost on us mm. um, and just expressing our concern. So we'll go ahead and, and put in um, uh, our opposition to the planning minister. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you. No worries. Thank you very much for taking the time. Councillors, do you have any questions, please? No? Can no, I thanks. Just, thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Can I just ask one, um, because I, I am aware of Bald Hills um, um, concerns and the court cases now, you were speaking about the the noise and the sleep deprivation. How far from the towers is that impacting? Do you know that answer or not, please? You need to unmute yourself. Sorry. And yeah. The sleep studies are still underway. I don't have any further evidence, but another speaker may. But we do know that well, we certainly live two kilometres from the tower. So we were looking at evidence at that level. And certainly there's evidence to suggest that at two kilometres, there is disturbed sleep. That it's... Um, I think it's 35 decibels or something. 35 to 40 decibels. Mm. And that at that level, there is... <coughs> it's like um, living next to a runway but that the planes never take off. The engines are always running and that it's also then can be intermittent so that it's a plane constantly waiting to take off that's like a fridge in the next room and it turns on and off and on and off. Oh, okay, thank so you very like much. Low level white noise, you just can't, yeah. Thank you. No worries, thank you. Okay. Next speaker is Gary White. Just checking my list of uh, participants, Madam Mayor. I don't see a Gary listed, but whether they're under a different name, uh, doesn't look like it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Come back to Gary. Yep. All right, the next one is Daryl G. I saw Daryl on the screen. Okay. Oh, I can see Daryl. Yes. Uh, Daryl. Not... <laughs> All right. Uh, thank um, you. Oh, hang on. Yep. Um, so if you can just wait a second. Sorry, has Gary White? Is he? Uh, this is Dan Caffrey. Oh, Dan. All right. Can you yep. just. Um, I've just got, sorry, Dan. Um, I've just got Daryl that I've just started with him and then I'll come back to you. No worries. Okay, sorry, Daryl, if you'd like to speak, please. Okay, thank, thank you, Mayor. 
Um, my name's Daryl. I'm actually representing the Streslecki Community Alliance this evening, um, SCA for short. Basically, I want to talk about uh, how we formed and the fact that we will be putting in submissions, uh, objections against uh, the planning permit. And I'll just want to let people know the reasons in dot point form on, on why. Um, the SCA was formed around two years ago by a small group of residents in the townships of Yanar, Ballara, Delburn and Driffield. Um, they were concerned about the Delburn wind farm proposal that we only heard about via the media in March 2019. Um, so the SCA now today, we represent around 130, uh, sorry, 150 homes, which is also includes around a, a thousand um, residents. Now these residents now are in the towns of Ballara, Yanard, Delburn, Driffield, Hearns Oak, Colville, Mowy, Mowy South and Thorpedale and Narragan. The, the, the SCA membership are objecting to the industrial size wind farm with these turbines being built at a height of 250 metres tall. Now, everyone knows that's, that's the height of Rialdo building um, in an area that is in a pine plantation. Certainly from the from Streslecki Alliance point of view, uh, most of us that live close to the area, which we live in the area, uh, went through fires in 2009. We went through fires in 2014. And one of our biggest concerns about having a wind turbine, 33 of them, as an industrial um, power producing plant in a pine plantation, we don't believe is a safe environment to put residents in. Some other reasons that we're, that we're also uh, uh, objecting to is that they're being built too close to homes. Um, one thing I will say at this point, and I'll say it again at the end, the Streslicky Community Alliance are not against renewable energy, not at all. We support the Star of the South. We certainly just don't believe they're being built in the right possible place for, for reasons, but you know, health, noise pollution. I heard Caroline mention noise pollution earlier. Um, community health and wellbeing, that's, that's certainly an issue for us. Uh, the visual impact on the landscape, the environment, the animal life, uh, koalas, kangaroos, eagles, there's all sorts of things we can go through and list. And I'm representing, as I say, 350 households tonight. So we have a lot of people that have got the same views. And the majority of these people will be putting in objections to, to this. So we want council to be aware of where we're at and what our planning is and the reasons why we're doing it. We're also very concerned as residents in Latrobe Valley is uh, what impact it's gonna have on the devaluation of our properties. Um, I think if people certainly, uh, the devaluation is gonna happen because people won't wanna live next to a wind farm. And we're talking that some of the residents in, in our area are living within 1.4 kilometres to a wind farm. Um, you know, it was mentioned earlier that uh, the noise alone impacts from two kilometres, and the majority of these are within within homes closer than two, two kilometres away. The other side of it is we're also looking at uh, blade throw. Now, these wind farms are being built, or the turbines are being built close to roads. They're, they're within 200 kilometres of the Streslecki Highway. Um, if a turbine was to lose a blade, these blades are 90 metres long. Um, the National Wind Farm Commissioner is, is a recommending or suggesting that these turbines should be built further than 200 kilometres away from roads. Now that's not happening. That's not anywhere in the planning, planning uh, scheme. Uh, metres, sorry, not kilometres, sorry, metres. Um, the other thing that we've come across is social licensing. We're concerned about OSME social license responsibility. Uh, just in the last week, we have had phone calls from people that live in Mowy, Mowy South, Colville, that never knew this turbine, wind turbine facility was being built. The only way they found out was from a letter they received in the mail within this last week from OSME. So we have some real concerns about their social licensing in relation to this. If they're, if they're not doing well in their social licensing, they're certainly not going to look after the residents of the area either. Um, and as we know, it will be built. If it gets passed, sorry, yeah, the, if the planning permit gets passed, it'll be sold off for someone else to build it. Um, there is talk at the moment that particular company will be from England. 
Um, but there also could be some Chinese involved in that. We're not so sure. Or China could be involved in that. So again, I just want to reiterate to people because there's a lot of people out there think that we're totally against wind farms. We're totally against renewable energy. Uh, that's not the case. We are just against exactly the positioning of this wind turbine facility over a pine plantation. Um, and the biggest risk to us or to a lot of people will be they are scared from the fires we've had, the last two major fires we've had, and we're scared of having another fire here. If one of those or a couple of those turbines fail, they catch a light, you're not going to be able to get it. You're not going to be able to get to it and fight it. Um, you know, in 2009, 2014, we had aircraft to put out the fires and a lot of people around here remember those fires and that was the only thing that saved the areas around Janar, Ballara, was the aircraft that saved people's homes. We lost enough homes and we did lose some lives in those fires and we there's no way an aircraft is going to come across 33 wind turbines. We don't believe to put the fire out. All right, so that's where I'm from, um, who I'm representing and thank you for your time. No worries. Thank you very much, um, Daryl. Oh, sorry, I write notes uh, as you go. Now, any councillor wish to ask any question, please? Yeah, Councillor Ferguson. Um, hi, Daryl. I'm just wondering, um, I know that you're speaking on behalf of all those residents tonight. Are there others in the room tonight that will be speaking as well who are part of that? At this stage, I don't think so. Um, yeah. Um, my wife's with me and she'd be speaking, oh, as, um, wow. we're speaking together at the moment, um, but I'm not sure of anybody else at this stage. Okay. Tessa, I would say. Oh, sorry, Tessa. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Tessa's put a hand up. Yes, she will be. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you very much. No worries. Any other councillor wish to ask a question? Uh, Kelly? Or oh, Councillor O'Callaghan? No, uh, Kel's fine. G'day, yeah. Madam Mayor. Um, is it possible, uh, oh, sorry, just if the speakers could just revisit for us um, the organisations they were speaking on behalf of tonight and just a bit of an idea of how many members there are in terms of that, just so we can get a bit of a scale on quantum, just to revisit that before they close off. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Okay, speakers, if you can be mindful of that and inform us, that would be really handy. Thank you. Okay, any other councillors wish to ask a question? Nope. Nothing from me, Madam Mayor. Thank you. No worries. Uh, thank you, Daryl, for, for speaking. Thank you. Okay. Yes, well, you, we'll you are very welcome. Thank you, Daryl. Um, now, we'll go back because Dan Caffrey actually is here now and Gary White is too. So I'll go to you first, Dan, and then I'll go to Gary. Okay, Dan. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sharon, councillors and everyone. Um, Obviously, uh, Latrobe Valley Sustainability Group uh, strongly supports uh, the OSME proposal. Uh, it doesn't take uh, very much uh, looking at the news and the Arctic is on fire, um, you know, highest you know, temperatures, uh, British Columbia and all these uh, cold countries. Uh, we've had our own um, increasing prevalence of droughts and bushfires we know what's causing it, it's carbon pollution in the atmosphere. 50% higher than what we evolved um, to, um, normal levels about 275, levels now up to 420 parts per million CO2. Um, this is, uh, it's like uh, your cholesterol, you know, very minor part of your body, but uh, in the geological time, 250 years is the blink of an eye. In a blink of an eye, if you, if you uh, cholesterol went up in that time, you know, you'd be on life support or dead. So we know we're heading for that. We need renewable energy. And uh, this, we would argue that this uh, location is perfect because it's away from um, private uh, property, it's not on private property, rather it's on uh, the plantation <laughs> land. Uh, it doesn't have um, a lot of uh, biodiversity left in it. Um, the, the, uh, um, it, the, it would produce a significant amount of uh, uh, electricity for Victoria. Uh, that 200 megawatts uh, is enough. I've heard, uh, talk to uh, you know, some power plant operators and dispatchers of, of energy and uh, 
basically um, that would supply all of Eastern Victoria. Um, if you had your, um, you know, if we're supplying 200 megawatts all of time. So it's significant. Um, the other thing too, to remember is that uh, um, we need replacement industries. Uh, uh, we cannot continue with coal for as, you know, a, very much longer. We all know that. Um, 2030 is my prediction is when there'd be mandates one way or the other. Um, you look at the bigger picture and uh, the uh, EU, America, a lot of countries are actually going to put uh, taxes on our exports uh, to make up for the difference in, in um, the carbon price that we have in Australia compared to their country. And that's reasonable because they're actually paying an upfront cost to go to renewable energy, which would put their industries at a disadvantage compared to ours. So <clears throat> if we're going to have energy to power our systems uh, economically, uh, we need wind, large scale wind, we need solar. Um, and uh, this is an important part of the the process just to be the first large scale one north of the stress leckies uh, or in, in Gippsland and uh, probably the first of a few more, quite a few more. And uh, it balances out the supply of energy from the state. Most of the wind energy is in, in uh, Western Victoria at the moment, but we need uh, over this side as well to, to um, have a more constant supply as those fronts come through. through. And uh, I think um, people have mentioned, uh, and, and I heard Daryl before and someone else mentioned infrasound, the problems with infrasound, well, you know, it's all in the mind. The double um, blind experiments have been conducted and, and uh, you know, the infrasound, which is just uh, below 20 hertz, what we can here, that's, that's in the environment all the time. Um, animals can hear it, but we can't, but it's there. Um, and to say that infra, infrasound is gonna cause a problem is just, you know, it's playing on people's fears that it might. Um, it's proven that it doesn't. Um, as far as the, the, the fire risk, the, having good roads access in there, you can fight a fire more effectively. And all the blades uh, can be, uh, the turbines can be orientated in a certain way. And with GPS, pilots can actually deliver water very accurately in wind, for, in wind uh, farms. Uh, we saw um, aircraft um, delivering water on bushfires in the 2020 fires. And, um, you know, that, that was on, on the news. So, to say that you can't fight a fire, I mean, that that's, they haven't, you know, some, if anyone says that really hasn't thought about it and hasn't looked at the, uh, the evidence that the CFA and other people have actually um, delivered. Um, you know, it's, it's good to see that the residents up there or, or, or um, people that uh, um, Daryl was speaking for, you know, recognise that, uh, We've got to go to renewable energy, but I, I really think, you know, they've um, been subject to a bit of a, a fear campaign, a lot of hype, um, a lot of heat, not much light um, about the possible dangers and disadvantages of wind farms. Um, there's a wind commissioner in Australia has said that 90% uh, of the complaints they get about wind farms are before they're they're put in. So I think it's um, the opponents of wind farms, uh, such as the ex Warbra Foundation, I think they now call themselves stop these things, get in and, and put a lot of um, misinformation around and uh, it gets people churned up. And, and uh, you know, when you've got a royal community like that, it, it's just, uh, it's very harmful. So um, I really, I'm a bit, you know, I'm sorry that those people are, um, you know, the residents there are becoming distressed about this, but uh, 
in many respects, it's going to improve their lifestyles. They get payment for living nearby each year. Uh, there'll be a community fund that goes to local halls and schools. Um, there's um, um, the councils, uh, three councils will get um, uh, income as well from the development. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd just like to uh, uh, probably conclude on, on, on that, but I think the benefits um, to society, um, the wider society is as part of the Australian nation, that's our response to climate change. Um, the uh, local wealth generation, the jobs in construction and uh, the jobs that will, will um, um, be enabled. And the fact that, you know, it's making use of the, the uh, electricity grid, the high transmission, high voltage transmission lines we've got. It's a, it's a perfect location in just about every respect. So I'll finish on that one and um, just uh, listen to the other speakers. <laughs> sorry, um, sorry, Dan. I, I thought um, the clock, our CEO was going to put the clock up on his screen. So you actually got longer, I suggest, than... I, I did, um, Madam Mayor, I think a couple of times. That I did. Oh, 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 sorry, I... I, I, I That's um, my fault. Yeah. I, I can send a direct message to the next speaker when their time is um, coming to end. might be a better method. Oh, I um, apologise so much. I, um, I really was waiting just, on um, some sort of a... Um, call there and I just didn't yeah. uh, notice. No, my Sorry. Um, now, what I'd like you to do next time, just unmute yourself and even if you say, oi, I'll, I'll get it. Um, so yeah. sorry, that's my fault, everybody. I, I was taking notes and I didn't see that come up. So I, I do. Um, but I, I would ask speakers when they, they're actually speaking now, Different people have different points of views, but if we can be respectful of other people's points of views, because people can take offence to some of um, the comments that are given. So uh, I would like to um, ask people to be very mindful of that because they wouldn't like it done to them. So I would appreciate that they don't do it to others. Um, that's not right. Um, Councillors, do you have any? Oh, Councillor Ferguson. Yeah, I'd just like to know. I know it was accidental, but would all speakers be awarded that same time frame now? I know it will extend the meeting, but I feel it would only be in fairness. <laughs> yeah, look, um, I actually don't even know how long um, Dan went for. Uh, Steve, do you know how long, how much yeah. longer he went for? Uh, Daryl uh, had, uh, I think, two goes, so it was about six minutes, and uh, Dan was slightly over that, so I did keep a record. So people, um, uh, I'll, I'll advise people at three minutes, and if the councillors are happy to give extra time, we'll go down that path, I think. Madam Thank Mayor, you. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's fair, and I this is my fault because um, I didn't pull Daryl up, nor did I pull Dan up. But if you look at it like... Both are opposing, so it even itself out. It doesn't make it right, but um, both both sides have got extra. Okay, now we councillors, do you have any other questions, please? Um, I'd just like to clarify something, please, Dan. You said you were talking about the wind commissioner, and ninety percent are or 90% of complaints are what? Oh, yeah. Um, there was, uh, yeah, just nearly all of the complaints made to the Wind Commission about wind farms happened before the uh, wind farms are built. So oh, I think okay. that was... No worries. That That's it. Thanks, Dan. Um, all right. Try to build it. Okay. No worries. Because in fairness, you got a lot longer than you were due. All right. Next person we have is Gary White. Yes. Hello. How Hi, Gary. How's it going? 
yeah, sorry, I've just been listening in the background. I'll uh, be as brief as I can. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, just a quick background on myself. My name's Gary White. I'm a third generation Latrobe Valley, uh, lived in the Latrobe Valley. My grandparents lived here, moved here from Malta, immigrated from Malta to come to the Latrobe Valley. So I'm third generation. I've got a proud background in working in uh, pretty much all of our power stations in the Latrobe Valley. Did my apprenticeship at the SECV in electrical fitting and armature winding. Uh, went on to work for Siemens for 10 and a half years. We're at actually wound wind generators in our model workshop 20 years ago, would you believe? Wow. So, and uh, how they're made, basically. So um, on top of that, I'm also uh, a resident of Yanar. Um, the nearest sighted wind turbine to me will be in 2.5 kilometres of my property. Um, I moved to Yanar uh, eight years ago when my partner was pregnant, having worked in industry my whole life. Um, I searched for a place where I could I could relax when I got home from work and I didn't see any industry. I didn't see any high voltage power lines. I could make out, but I was in the wilderness almost. It was a lovely rural setting. Mm. Now, I found that place in Yanar. Now, when you drive into Yanar from Hazelwood, you will go past a set of HV power lines just before you hit the bridges as you come into Yanar. That's the last set of HV power lines or the most subtly set of HV power lines that come out of the valley. Once I drove past that, I said to my partner, do you realise that's the last set of HV lines in the valley? Once we got to the other side of Yanar, I could not see Hazelwood. I could not see Loyang or Yalorn. All I could see was a beautiful treed ridge line with a gorgeous rural outlet, uh, outlook in front of it. I overlooked paradise as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, as I said, I've been in the power industry my whole life. The transition away from coal, I believe, is happening too quickly and we are going to see a gap in real generator supply in Victoria. We're already seeing it on a daily basis. I am, I guess, what you'd call in the industry. We see it in our prices. So to go on from that, when I get home from work and I relax and I see what's happened to our electricity industry since privatisation and all the told you so moments on the way, then when Hazelwood was shut, Everyone, everyone in the industry knew there would be a shortfall in electricity. We're seeing that even more so with the, uh, the walls at Yalorn giving way. We have let our coal infrastructure go to the point it has become unreliable. That's from an industry insider. For me, how this affects me, I will now see, if this proposal goes ahead, I will now see six 250 metre tall wind towers up on the ridge 2.5 kilometres from my place. That's taking what was the least industrialised zone of the Latrobe Valley and turning it into the largest by area industrialised zone that Latrobe Valley will see. That is not what I moved here for. No worries. I moved away from the Collins. Now. Sorry. You, I, yeah, it's sorry. all right because the, uh, the other two speakers got um, longer. I've just got one now, more thing to have, touch on. Sorry, yep, Councillor. Okay. One more thing, and it'll be very brief. We've heard oh, a lot wow. of emotion come about uh, about climate change and everything. We all know what's happening there. No one's denying that fact. What I want to say about the risk assessment of fire in this area. Now, I deal with risk assessments. I must do at least half a dozen risk assessments every day. There's two components to a risk assessment. There's risk and there's likelihood of risk. So when... It's proposed that they will be decreasing the risk because they'll be putting in more roads, more fire suppression systems. We also need to take into account where at the moment, there is no likelihood of fire up there. There is no ignition source up there. If we put in 33 wind turbines to do a risk assessment, it must increase the risk, the likelihood of risk by 33 times. That is just the facts of a risk assessment, risk versus likelihood. The best way to avert this risk, and after the Bush Fire Commissioner's um, findings, the best way to avert risk is to not in this place. So it's really all I wanted to say, Ken. So thank you very no much, Brian. Thank you very much. Now, Councillor O'Callaghan- If Kelligan, we eliminate the risk, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, Councillor O'Callaghan, I did see your hand up. It's not up now. Did you have a question, please? 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. It was just, I thought you were looking for an extension of speaking times. So I was just, I wasn't <laughs> sure what you were doing with the formality, trying to help yeah. out. So no, I, I'm just trying to be fair. Um, so thank you. And now- That's all I had anyway, the... Councillor. So thank you very much for your time. I'll put the rest in my submission. Oh, no worries. Thank you very much. Now, do I have any other councillors wish to ask a question, please? No. Okay, thank you very much. All right, the next person we have is Chris Milne. Is Chris here, please? Hello. Oh, there we are. Yeah, Hello. can you hear me? I can. How's it going? All right, uh, I'll jump into it. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's a great deal of incentive to uh, support the project. Um, I've seen uh, community members and neighbours attacked for doing so. So, uh, you know, through online abuse and even abusive messages out the front of their homes. And as awful as this is, I, I understand why it's happening uh, and people are afraid and that makes us do all sorts of things. But I feel much of the basis for that fear is rooted in fiction. So I'm not sure how many locals you're going to get publicly saying, you know, this is brilliant, let's let's get it built. Um, I live in Ballara and I'm, I'm very happy with my view. Uh, we've got a beautiful view. And, uh, and I also can't uh, help but feel some apprehension over uh, how those views would change through this project. Um, I can see the Mass Tower uh, from where I'm sitting right now, and uh, we'll also see um, 33 of the 33 wind turbines, and they are huge turbines. But um, I also can't pretend that this is some untouched, um, pristine wilderness. You know, I can also see the, the pine plantations, which they'd be built in. Uh, farmland, roads, houses, uh, power lines, and uh, you know, and occasionally a smoky sky. Um, I also try to keep in mind that our, our coal fuel power stations are closing down. They're, they're not building new ones, and um, private investment has shifted to power generation like uh, that's proposed here. And I, I feel for the benefit of everyone in La Trobe City uh, that we should be welcoming that private investment. Uh, no one wants a new housing development next to them or some new industry popping up in their backyard, but if we don't adapt and grow as a city, we will be left behind. Um, the legacy of our coal industry here in the valley is a power grid that developers want to build into. That's a resource we have. And I feel the focus of Latrobe City should be how to make this wind farm uh, a best practice wind farm and look into encouraging the, adaptation, um, the adaption of um, technology used at other new wind farms to help meet some of the concerns that the community have, um, such as uh, bird and bat deaths. You know, there's things that could be included in the uh, in the wind farm for that. Um, I really would like things to say the, the same and just keep having the same views and just, you know, have nothing change. But I understand that things inevitably, inevitably change. And, and even when they do change, I feel our area will still remain to be a beautiful place to live. Um, but overall, I feel like uh, the, how the city should move forward is um, uh, by looking at how we can make this wind farm work best uh, for for the locals uh, and and for what the, the environment that it's in and that's that's all i have sorry no worries thank you very much councillors do i have any questions please councillor ferguson yep this isn't directly for chris i just wanted to know if um in the when this is all correlated if we'll be advised of which speakers actually live in the area where it's proposed and which are offering opinions from different groups because i really want to be able to distinguish who i'm listening to and where they live etc yeah okay. the fair comment if when you're about to speak if you can say actually where you live um some okay some may not wish to given the Chris what he just uh, said yeah I guess so because um I thought that there was um an engagement committee for OSME um and I'm just wondering if it was researched who those members of that were or anything before this yeah. um a suggestion could be and thank you about if they can say how far from the the turbines that they will live if people were comfortable with that because it doesn't show anybody else where you actually live you could be in there's a, a wide area if people were comfortable to do that and um, perhaps disclose any conflicts of interest of engagement yeah communities. Yeah, yeah. yeah so Tough. okay all right any other questions, please? No. Okay. No, thanks. Thank you. 
no, no worries. That was a no, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, got that. <laughs> thank you. Next person we have is Wendy Farmer. Wendy. Um, thank, thank you, Sharon. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I actually applied to um, for two spots. One was a private um, spot and one was for my position as Friends of the Earth. Ah. Do you know which one? No. And mm, Okay. Ha sorry. Are we... Are they accepted? Have they been accepted? I've got two on the list. Yes. I was told, yes. Yeah, yeah. so there are there two slots. It doesn't matter which one uh, you present first, Wendy. Okay, yeah. no worries. Thank so, you. So, yes, if you can define which one you're speaking to. Absolutely. So, initially, I'll start with my um, my new position as Sorry, can I just ask a question, Madam yep. Mayor? Sorry, Wendy, before Wendy gets that way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Just a question just on process, Madam Mayor. I'm just wondering, were others also afforded the opportunity to speak individually and on behalf of organisations, just for clarification? Yeah, that's fair. Um, Mr CEO, were they or not? Uh, for, I think those that uh, had requested that, uh, there, there was one other, I think, um, from memory. Um, Karen, I think, is it, um, you might be able to help me here. <laughs> That'd be nice. Karen's we there. Had, yes, sorry, I think there was. We had um, two people who registered asking to speak on behalf of an organisation and on behalf of themselves. And so we have, um, we put that out in the comments as well, that we had those two on behalf of an organisation and on behalf of themselves. We do we have another one after Wendy actually in the same boat, Kelly. So they've been afforded the same um, approval. Yeah, that was fine. Just checking to confirm that it was clearly communicated to everyone so that it was, you know, so that we're providing an equitable and safe space. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Much appreciated. No worries. Thank you. Councillor Ferguson. Yeah. Hang on, Wendy. I'm just um, raising what I've mentioned before. You said that there's nobody from the company OSME, but if they don't have an engagement community group, is that still directly related to OSME? Well, I would have thought yes, um, would be my opinion. Yeah. Um, was that um, part of the procedure for people participating tonight and was that taken into consideration? Um, I, three, I, yep. Uh, three, Madam Mayor. So um, when we um, had a previous um, consultation regarding you, Lab, we didn't have that process, but for this one, we did ask whether the, anybody who was presenting was representing another organisation. So if they were, for example, representing that organisation you mentioned, it probably should have been declared whether people chose to do that. We, um, we As officers, we may not know whether they were part of that group, but um, we had asked that question for right. people to, to declare whether they were part of some other uh, organisation. Yeah. I believe that um, names may be stated on minutes on the OSME website. Um, which is something people could have researched. But I think maybe people should be given the opportunity now to declare their interests perhaps before speaking. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Well, I um, would can hope... Can I make a comment? Um, um, hang on. Hang no. on, thanks. Um, I'm not going to get into debate. I, I really aren't. Um, I would hope that everybody here tonight actually um, is above board and does the right thing. We're, we're here to listen if they are here. We've got two, two different people who have actually put their hand up and have come, come forward and said they're speaking on behalf of whoever it is and have registered as an individual too. So they have come forward and they're being honest about it. And I would hope that anybody else speaking d affords the same courtesy to us that we're affording to them to listen to them. So uh, does that answer your question, Councillor Ferguson? Yeah, I just would have thought any anyone with associations to the company as well or involved in the engagement I uh, would suggest processes. that they should have yeah, been... They should have declared an interest, I feel. Yes. That's my yep. opinion. And that's what I'm saying. I yep. think they should be um, upfront, yep. like everybody else has, like um, Wendy 
it's just been and there's another lady after her they've they've been up front so i would expect that anybody else is up front as well because you know we are showing the courtesy to them yeah they need to show the courtesy to us okay thank you no worries wendy sorry um Sharon, just before I start my three minutes, I just want to make, you know, people that sit on um, reference groups do not necessarily, necessarily support or um, not support a project. They actually look at the facts and that's the reason they're on that project, like the U label or anything else. And I think to um, say that a community member doesn't have a right because they are um, employed by somebody else, everybody on a reference group is usually uh, employed by somebody, is yeah. actually an insult. There has been rumours going no, around. No, that's and I'd not like what's to... being said, Wendy. No, that is that's not what what's feels. being said. No, that is not what is being said. It is being said that if people can be upfront that, okay, I am or I am not on whatever, like you have been, that's what we're asking for. That's all. Okay, thank you. Um, I think the so word I, we're just looking for, Madam Mayor, is just, it's just transparency. I yeah, think that's all both my Councillor Ferguson and myself were asking. It's just a, a yeah. transparency, that's it, no judgment, just one or the other. Yeah, and, and it's about courtesy. And I will be transparent because I'm happy to say yeah. um, this submission is from Friends of the Earth. Friends of the Earth actually do not have a position on the board or on the reference group as such. I personally have a... Um, position on the reference group. Um, yep. Friends of the Earth do support the project. Um, I will go for my notes because I'm representing an organisation. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, we really wanted to focus on the positives of what this um, project would create. The Delburn Wind Farm will create 106, 186 construction jobs and 25 ongoing full-time jobs for the region. That's 186 full-time construction jobs. Invest 109 million in the Latrobe Valley um, economy. Power 135,000 homes with clean renewable energy. Cut Victoria's emissions by 640 tonnes each year. It will overlook the retired coal, um, the coal-fired plant and mine. Sorry, Hazelwood. Friends of the Earth has followed the project closely since it was first publicly announced and it is supportive, supportive of the Delburn Wind Farm as a significant new energy project for Latrobe Valley that will reduce greenhouse gas emissions and create new opportunities for the region. Following information brought to us by community concerned community members, FOE has undertaken visits to the proposed project site to note any potential impact on the koala habitat. During construction, FO is concerned about the potential loss of up to 54 large trees that may be utilised by koalas and other species, being aware that Strasleki koalas are actually endangered species. Acknowledging that around half of these will likely be retained of particular concern is a known koala tree on the corner of Smith Road and the Strasleki Highway. FO opposes any actions that will impact on this tree and the koalas that live in it. OSPI has expressed to FOE that this large tree will not be removed and will have protections during wind farm construction under their vegetation and management plan. Broadly speaking, we believe that the pine plantation is an appropriate location to site a wind farm as it is an existing industrial site close to existing transmission infrastructure, helping to, to reduce our environmental impacts. The Delburn Wind Farm is an exciting new project for the Latrobe Valley and encourages all community members with an interest in renewable energy's future to make a submission to the planning process to shape the proposal and deliver the best possible outcome for the community. And on behalf of FO, I want to thank you. No worries. Councillors, do I have any questions for Wendy, please? No, thanks. Thanks, no Wendy. Worries. No worries. Um, just a question from me, please, Wendy. You were talking about the, the tree, koala tree? Yes. Um, hmm. My question is, okay, um, oh, I understand you've got to have gum trees for the koalas, but 
are, are you saying that that'll be the only tree? So my concern is, okay, where's the rest of their food source? If you've got the, the large tree, I have no problem with that. But is that in isolation? So I'm just wanting a bit of clarification. Yes, yeah, so that, that that's a tree that's been identified as having koalas in it. But there's a lot of trees in that plantation that are a koala habitat. And so so have worked very closely with um, the OSME to make sure that, you know, the koalas are protected, that the um, animals are protected. They're involved with the bio link that will come down from the bore bore along the Streslecki, um, along the Streslecki's and a lot of people will be aware of the bio link and are supporting that to make sure that we can actually not just protect them, but actually increase their habitat. No worries. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ferguson. Um, so that particular land zone, what is that? Um, is it zoned as industrial or is it zoned as farming land that we're speaking about there? It's actually industrial. I believe it's industrial land. It's not farming land um, owned by um, HVP. Okay. Can okay. we have can, um, officers yeah. can you call um, this investigate? clarification if they know, please? Uh, the land is predominantly zoned farming. Okay, all right. Okay, so no, it's predominantly farming, Wendy. Okay. No worries. Okay. Um, now you're speaking here as uh, as myself, yeah. um, as an individual. Um, please make aware that I do sit on the um, reference group. Um, with a lot of other people that have interest in, you know, seeing renewable energies happen, but also that are a little bit scared of what is happening as well. Mm. Um, so once again, thank you for the opportunity that I can make a personal um, submission or a listening piece to the listening um, conversation. Um, with my work with... Um, with my work not only in the Tro Valley, but across Australia, one thing is clear. Communities transitioning fear what will happen to them. But often the question is asked, what will happen to our communities when our energy changes? What is the, what is the future of La Trobe Valley and how can we imagine ourselves? At the moment, we have um, a state of energy emergency because of the um, flood damage to your lawn. We also have the announcement that your lawn will close in seven years. So how does La Trobe Valley move forward? Could we have imagined the changes um, that we, we saw from implementing the internet. There was a question about, you know, renewable energies don't give jobs. Remember when Latrobe Valley first took on um, internet and actually my colleague Ron Ibsen was the one that put it into libraries. We didn't see the need for internet. We didn't actually think that, you know, we would have much use for it, but how could we do even this today? New jobs were created because different things happened. And so from renewable energies, we will see different um, projects happen. We will see different jobs created. We don't know what the future will be for all of our kids. They're jobs that we don't even know exist. What is the role of the Latrobe Valley and what do we want it to be in the energy market? Energy security and affordability for all. And that's really important that we think about those that can't afford energy as well, that we make sure that we do have cheap energy. We watch what South Australia has happened in South Australia. Energy has become cheaper as more renewables have come into the market. In fact, today, I think I was at one time paying nine cents a kilowatt for energy. Um, I like to watch what I use. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and in, energy is changing and we need to be part of those changes. Latrobe Tr Valley can't afford to miss out but we need to make sure that we protect our communities, our environment, fauna and flora. We need to make sure safeguards are in place. I have taken the time to look closely at the project, including sitting on the reference group. As someone who has PTSD from the Hazelwood mine fire, I am confident the risk of fires has been addressed with best technology being offered. The fact is this plantation will be the best protected in the state. It will not be at risk of lightning, at lightning to the trees as the turbine technology will ground any strike. It will have thermal imaging and cameras to catch any hotspot or arson. Wind turbines are designed for um, aeroplanes to fly through. Many across La Trobe Valley have paid the price for living with power stations, health, constant dust, noise, etc. 
et cetera. But things are changing. Wind farms do, present, do not present the same issues as power stations. They are clean. The, no, the required noise level are less than the domestic reverse cycle air conditioner. Most will never hear them above the rustle of the trees, birds or road traffic. If residents do not want to see the, them, Os, sorry, if residents do not want to see them, OSME has a responsibility to, to access barriers for them. Have you got much more to go, Wendy? No, a couple of paragraphs. All right, if you're quick. Okay, <laughs> if, we, if we want a good project, we need to engage with the company and say what we need, not push them away. The company has reached out to this community. We need to work with them. One thing to note is that as with the newer projects, they, they will introduce good benefits to residents. Communities, sorry. Um, so these projects will give good benefits to communities, something we never saw with mining. If a mine um, decided it was going to the West, it never said, can we move to the West and we'll pay you for moving to the West. No worries, but in, As, in fairness, you've had two bites of the cherry. Uh, I had I, three minutes on each. I'm nearly finished. You've had more than three minutes on this. Um, you gave six minutes to speakers. Yes. I've got two paragraphs. Well, you said that before I let you go again. And so unless you've got a, a, um, a sentence to go, uh, I think that's fair. All right. I support the wind, far wind farm as part of the Latrobe Valley's transition. While we adopt, adopt new technologies, others will show interest in Latrobe Valley. No worries. Thank you. Now, um, we it was being asked if people could say how far they live from um, the proposed um, sites or from any of the turbines. Um, so would you know roughly how far you would live from there, Wendy? Considering I'm the first speaker and I didn't look it up, no, I don't. I'm yeah, in Newborough. Okay. I'm three kilometres from your lawn. No worries. Okay. Thank you. Um, but in fairness, everybody will be asked the same question, Wendy. Now, um, councillors, do you have any questions, please? Councillor Ferguson. You're on mute. I'm not sure who to ask. Um, but, you know, there was mention earlier about the lithium batteries in the pine plantations. And I just want to ascertain from somebody that can they be extinguished without water? I, I thought the understanding was they can't be extinguished with water, with, with, with water at all. So I'll put that out there. So for when someone's speaking on this matter, if councillors could get some kind of information, I'm, I will for myself, I'd like to know that. Um, I'd be grateful. Thank you. No worries. Okay, now I I just need to address, Gary, we're not, uh, um, unless you're speaking, there's no questions backwards and forwards. We're, we're just listening. But if you've got a question for any of the staff, if you put it in the chat, they'll try and address it. No worries. Thank you. Okay, next person we have is Catherine Thompson. Catherine, now you're doing the same as Wendy, speaking on to on an organisation and yourself. Is that the case, please? Yes, I registered on behalf of Strzelecki Sustainable okay. um, Futures and yep. also also myself. Um, but I'll start with uh, the the personal bit and go on to the Strzelecki Sustainable Futures. Um, I've been a resident of Ballara for 30 years and I've been blessed by country views and I also experienced the trauma of the 2009 bushfires. However, I work and shop in the larger towns of Morwell and Terrelgan where residents have coexisted um, for 70 years with the pollution from the Hazelwood Power Station and the Yalorn Power Station, which was first established in 1921, um, well, that's a lot of coal particulate uh, in the air and a lot of generational health impacts. So I feel like um, I am part of the Latrobe Valley, although I very specifically live in Ballara. And now for the, um, for the submission from the Strzelecki oh, Sustainable um, Future. All right, hang on. Oh, so I separate the two. 
Um, well, you him. asked me to disclose where I lived and oh, no, no. sort of who no, I am, no. so I had to do that because I didn't have it on the other one. Oh, no worries. Sorry. So uh, as you've just seen, you get three minutes for each. Yeah. So have you finished for your individual one or not? Uh, no, I'll, I'll do that now then. <laughs> I'll do um, that first. Okay, sorry, I okay. thought you'd finished with that, so that's um, why I was going to... Sorry. No, if you're going to count that now, I'll continue on um, with the other two and a half minutes, is it? Uh, I don't know about two and yeah. a half, but yes, go ahead. Okay, sorry. so um, I, I, survival is not just about house prices and perceptions of views. It's now about the challenge to maintain the basic building blocks of, of life, clean air, clean soil, clean water, and our ability to, to avert disastrous events. I feel like these are the main challenges facing our region here in the Latrobe Valley, and we are uniquely placed to help fight against climate change and lead the way in transitioning with renewables. The advantage of wind is clean air. Um, the Dalburn Wind Farm will produce minimal carbon pollution. The embodied energy needed to produce the turbines will be paid back after 18 months and then we'll have 22 to 25 years of emissions free energy into the grid. The Delburn wind farm will not use water and it will not need water for remediation, unlike coal with the Hazelwood mine alone chip to require gigalitres of water with um, possibly disastrous effects on, on the downstream rivers. At their peak, the Latrobe Valley power stations consumed 125 billions of water and they continue to guzzle huge amounts of water. This wind farm won't use any water. The wind farm won't produce any polluted soil or cause a gaping hole that has to be remediated at great cost. As people have mentioned, it's multiple use. And although technically it might be farming land, it's agroforestry. And so it is not, um, it is, it is not using um, farming land that is currently being used for food. So I think that's an advantage. And um, it's not having an impact on native forest, which is also a great advantage. Nearly all the vegetation that is to be removed is of low significance and it's lineal vegetation alongside roads. So the impact um, to biodiversity is very small in this project. And as well as that, the offsets that um, have been developed in consultation with the community um, or will be developed are very likely to see, as someone mentioned, biolinks and extensions and connections between mature forest, which is already available. Also, wind farms do not impact on bird and bat populations. I mean, sorry, they do. They do impact on bird and bat bat populations, but when compared to deaths attributable to cats, cars, power lines and other causes, then um, it is a small impact. And research has shown that um, the birds especially do adapt. I mean, raptors are um, some of the world's best aerial navigators. And within a few years, um, people have found that the population of these birds is as it was in the beginning. On the matters of health, um, uh, uh, from my reading is that a lot of the infrasound or wind turbine syndrome reports are not peer reviewed, okay. they are not scientific. Okay. And there is uh, no evidence Kath. to support that, those All diseases. Right. Yes. If you could that's wind this one point. up. Yep, that's it, thank you. Oh, right, no worries. Um, now, councillors, do I have any questions? Yeah, Councillor Ferguson. Um, I'm hoping to get some more answers around the the battery facility. Over the last few months, I'm confused about where that's located, and I thought it was near um, Indigenous sites and also within Pine Plantation. I just want to make. I can point. answer. I can answer. Yeah, that I just also need. Sorry, Catherine, for a moment. Just hang on a second. Um, if I could get council officers to investigate those things as well for our reports. Um, I'd be most appreciative, but also I'm happy. Um, I am asking this and listening to Catherine also. Yeah, thank you. So is that yeah. a question to me then? Yeah, I've just asked okay. you as well. Yeah. All, all right. Well, um, I actually was um, was interested in where the um, battery station was going to go, and I went up to the Osme office and we Google mapped the location, and it's um, plantation land, but it's already been cleared. There are no plantations there. 
and there has to be a very large bushfire area clear, cleared, you know, bushfire zone created around that plantation, um, around the, the battery storage facility. So it's not in plantation, it's not in living plantation, it will be on plantation land. Right, so we can also obviously get information from our officers, Sharon, around the distance that's cleared around those things and such things? I think it's two hectares altogether. That's what brings it up to 14 hectare of cleared vegetation. Two hectares actually relates to that to that battery station, which is a separate proposal. May not go ahead, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, thank you, Ta. No worries. Okay, Catherine, if you wish to speak with, what's your other hat you're wearing? <laughs> it's just like your sustainable future. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. So I was asked to disclose how many members, um, and I'd just like to make the point that a healthy community has many diverse views. We haven't run membership drives. We haven't held public meetings and got people to sign up on the door, and um, some of them who have been unwittingly added to the SCAR um, membership list just because they turned up at the hall, and I know that because people have told me that. Um, so we formed because we wanted to present uh, positives about the project, um, to share peer-reviewed science research and to engage in respectful dialogue. And we established a web page to that, um, for that purpose, um, which I will invite you to have a look at, JoseleskiSustainableFutures.org. Um, um, people were afraid to speak up in many cases who supported the wind farm. And that's why we became, in a way, a vocal agent for those people. So I can't tell you how many members we have, but I do know that there are a lot of people who have um, told me that they support the wind farm, um, but they don't particularly want to be upfront about it. We have core, a core group, um, most of whom are local. I, I live within three kilometres of the wind farm, and many of the members of our group live in Ballara and Yanar. Um, so, as far as my reading of a lot of the technical reports goes, OSME is following all legal and administrative technical and environmental requirements, and this is especially relevant for neighbours who are most likely to, ex to experience effect um, from the wind farm. There are very few houses within 1.5 kilometres so most houses are actually outside the required distance and all noise modelling impacts show that the impacts in houses are under 36 decibels and this complies with the New Zealand standard for acoustic wind farm noise and it's also internationally accepted as appropriate protection for sleep, health and amenity of residents. Um, we, we support the project because we believe that it will enrich the local community. Community benefits will, will provide ongoing direct financial benefits to individual neighbours and local communities and local governments. And the opportunities for share purchase in this um, wind farm will give you returns higher than your average bank will do. So there's a lot of financial incentive there as well. Um, climate change impacts make fire a real concern, a real concern for locals and HVP and the developers. And as I said, I also lived through the 2009 fires. But um, if areas of pine will be cleared around each turbine. Roads will be widened and upgraded for installation. And this will improve firefighting and fire breaks in the district. Um, both HVP trained fire workers and yep. wind farm trained people will be regularly on site and extra water storages will be installed. So we actually believe okay. that the farm will That's result. True. I've got one bit to finish. All it right, will result in better, better fire detection and more effective and safer access to fire control vehicles. Thank no you. No worries. Thank you. Um, and thank you for winding it up quick. Um, when you were told. Thank you. Okay, councillors, do I have any questions? Councillor Ferguson. Okay. Hi, Catherine. I just wanted to know um, how many members your group has, because I'd like to hear from all of the members as we go through how much representation there is on each group. 
Well, I've already told you that we don't have a membership as such. We have an e emailing list. We work through local media by putting news newspapers into local papers and um, by oh. engaging with the consultative, we have, a, we have a representative on the consultative committee, yep. um, which is a community consultative committee. I can't so, tell you how many members we have because we don't have a membership list as right. such. Thank you. Um, so just to confirm the name of that um, consultative committee yes. is the OSME consultative committee, is that right? It is the community consultative stakeholder committee for the Delburn Wind Farm. Right. And if you are on that committee, you are representing your organisation or yourself as a resident of the area. You are not representing OSME. There's a, you know, that distinction needs to be clear. Just because you're on a community consultative committee doesn't mean that That's you are okay. a I wasn't insinuating that. I just developer. wanted clarification around yeah. the actual title of the committee. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, that's the way we might be able to get projects up by having community input into that consultative committee. So the funds are directed back to the community. No worries. Okay, councillors, do I have any other questions, please? No. Um, no, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Just a question for me, Catherine. I'm sorry I didn't get it, write it down quick enough. Um, you're part of the Streslecky what? Sustainable. Sustainable. Sustainable futures. No if worries. You, if you Google us, you'll see our media releases, you'll see our web page where we've got lots of resources and visuals. And there's a lot of photos on there, so you can start counting the people, but that's only a small no fraction of us. That's okay. <laughs> now, sorry, um, I don't know whether you know or not if it's the same. Is this the same as Daryl's? No. No, thank you. <laughs> That's, that, that's that's We've both got three initials, but SCAR is SCA oh, and then Anti the Wind Farm. We're SSF and we are pro the Wind Farm. And we've okay. also been arguing for some qualifications, especially in regard to vegetation and fire considerations. Right. Thank you for that. And I'm glad I asked that question. Sorry, Daryl. <laughs> I didn't realise that. You learn something new every day. All right. Now... Thank you for that, Catherine. Now, the next speaker is Marianne Robinson. I did see Marianne. Oh, there you are. Okay, Marianne. Thank you. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of Voices of the Valley. Um, I should say at the beginning that I don't work for OSME. I, Voices of the Valley doesn't work for OSME. Um, so we're, we're talking about, I'm talking about Voices of the Valley policy, not as a representative of any other organisation. And just before you, before they start the, the clock, <laughs> um, right, uh, we've been asking the others roughly how far from the um, wind farms are you? or the organisation? <laughs> if you know the answer or you can do a rough, that's great. If you don't, just say so because you weren't asked beforehand. I live in Churchill. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, there are people from, the from Voices of the Valley who live... Um, Morwell, Hazelwood North, Tangle South, Newborough. Um, it's not a particular location. No worries. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I will try to keep this brief as possible. Um, Voices of the Valley is a community advocacy group, um, and I think I should make clear that we're volunteers um, and we don't get funding from anywhere. So we pay for what we do. Voices of the Valley supports the development of the Delburn Wind Farm as one of a suite of renewable energy projects in the Latrobe Valley. We have had a, a policy of developing renewable energy 
um, for at least the last six years and have been working towards this. So some of the reasons um, that we support renewable energy are to build on the tradition of energy production in the valley and draw on the skills that people have, to make use of the existing transmission and distribution infrastructure. Obviously the Latrobe Valley is the, the core of that transmission infrastructure. So this is a place where new forms of energy production need to happen. To maintain energy security as coal-fired power stations are wound down and closed. And to complement, we see wind farms as complementing developments in rooftop solar and proposed solar farms. So all of these need to occur where we're not looking at just one form of renewable energy. The advantages of the Delburn site, um, first of all, it's located close to high voltage transmission lines, which will facilitate connections to the electricity grid and minimize connection costs. Um, the problem of connection has been uh, a fairly significant problem for wind farms in other parts of the state because they don't have the capacity. Um, but um, in, in the west of the state, the connections are congested and so wind farms aren't as effective as they might be. Here, we can make best use of those connections. The Delburn site is a compatible land use site with existing timber plantations. It's not going to take up a large amount of, of land to construct wind turbines. And the compatibility of the land use is evident in the agreement made with Grand Ridge Plantations. And the joint use of the site will include more frequent monitoring leading to improved protection against arson and bushfires. So um, we're very aware of the problems. Oh. Um, sorry, Marianne, I'm getting the, the hand raised that your time is up, but uh, my okay, question, one, just one hang, more hang point. On, hang on just a second. My question is now, I was asking Marianne a few questions before, so was that counted in the three minutes? No, oh, no, no. I started after the, the question. After All right, um, have you got a quick how much more have you got, Marianne? One sentence. That'll be fine. So the further benefit to the community of <clears throat> this proposed wind farm is the commitment to contributing to a community development fund. No worries. Thank you very much. Okay, councillors, do I have any questions, please? No. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Marianne. Now, the next, next person we have is Jim Rasmussen. Is Jim here, please? Yep, I'm here. Oh, sorry, Jim. Good, good to go? Yep, you're good to go. All right. Oh, uh, well, before, uh, I'll be fair, um, so it doesn't cut into your three minutes. Yeah. All right, so roughly how far... I live just outside the five kilometre radius yep. of the wind no farm. Worries. And I'm going to see about six or eight of them. Thank you. All right. See, that way it's not your three minutes. Yep. Okay. Fire away. Um, I, I, I live up near Budgeree and we just experienced that storm back in um, the start of June. And I'm wondering how, if, how many councils have been up and seen the carnage that has happened up here I because um, when when they talk about that there's going to be you know maybe 40 trees removed from this um, pine plantation I, I've got 40 trees down on my farm alone and the, if you look at that triangle between Whitelaw's track Gilbert's road and Explorer's road there's literally thousands of tons of timber on the ground and it's climate change we had 300 millimeters of rain up here 
in 30 hours. And we had 100 kilometer hour winds and that storm went for like 12 hours. So I, I really support this wind farm because it's renewable energy and it, we need to stop burning coal. And it's no good waiting till 2050. That, that, that's just madness. The climate change is here right now. You've only got to come up to Gilbert's Road and see what it looks like. The, when I've been down to Upper Middle Creek and there's, there's debris up there and it's 15 mm. feet above the water line. So there was 15 feet of water that went through that creek system from one rain event. And this, this is not normal. This is not, I haven't seen, I've lived here for about eight or nine years now and I haven't seen that in my time here. And I'd like to know if anyone has experienced a weather event like that. And that comes only two years after the Yinau fire, which I was also um, burnt out by. Now on my farm, there's trees 150 years old, or there was, and now well, almost all of them are gone or they're on the ground now. And, and I'm, I'm the one that's gonna have to foot the bill to clean up all this stuff because it's on my land. So this is a cost to farming of climate change and it's right now. So I completely support that, the wind farm and it should go ahead, I'm hoping as soon as possible. And the council should also support it because the, the damage from climate change is only gonna get worse. And if anyone thinks that it's not happening right now, I, I don't know what they have to do. Like those people in Tarragon got flooded out and things like that. It, it doesn't affect everyone, but it's, it's impacting people all the time. And you've only got to look on the news around the world, what climate change is doing right now, not, not in 2050. And I know the council's a bit captured by the coal industry. And I really think you need to have a rethink because it's here now, it's here now and you need to act. And by supporting the wind farm, that's exactly what the council should be doing. Not making up excuses like, oh, it's a one in a hundred year storm or, or that the solar farm is a bit of an eyesore from the road, things like that. That's, we all, everyone has to like take one for the team and have some sort of renewable energy going in our local council areas. Everyone, not, not just Latrobe Valley, all okay. over the place needs to happen. Jim, your time's up. Have you, uh, is, no, have you that, got... that will do, that will do. All right, no worries. Well, I'd like to also say I have two young children that are witnessing all this carnage all the time as well. And that is also a great concern to me because they see these things happening right now and they absolutely don't know what to make of it. So that's also a, a huge problem for all our children. No worries. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay, councillors, do I ooh, have any questions, please? No. Um, I, I will say, though, Jim, I actually have been up and witnessed firsthand exactly what you're talking about. I know all about Whitewater's track, um, all up there. I actually have been up there a few times since the... Um, the storm damage, and I, I get what you're saying about all the trees. The people chipping just Whitelaw's track and fitting it, the trees that were small enough to fit in their chipper have moved 500 cubic metres, like 500 tonnes of chip just from Whitelaw's track. And then there was another crew doing Gilbert's Road. And what, what, how much does that cost? How much is that? We, this, luckily, the local council is not paying. The state government is paying uh, for this one, uh, and we, the taxpayers... We will paying. all be paying. Yeah, but uh, you know what I mean? Like 500 yeah, I do, tons, but just, I, just off the road. I, ma the I must pull you up, though, because we could speak about this for quite a while, and I have to be fair to everybody. Yep. Okay. Um, all right, councillors, no questions? No. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Next person we have is Jackie Hyatt. Thank you, Mayor Gibson. Uh, thank you, councillors. I will state that I live less than two kilometres from the proposed development and within 2.4 kilometres 
of the nearest turbine. I am representing myself, my family, but I do belong to the Streslecki Community Alliance. And I will take my three minutes. I object to the Delburn Wind Farm and Terminal Station Planning Permit applications. We chose to establish our home in this rural living zone adjacent to a farming zone, away from the built up environment and industry. If this proposal is approved, I will have six industrial wind turbines within 3.5 kilometres of our home. My concerns include fire risk, noise and ecological impact. During the 2009 Delburn complex fires, we stayed and defended our property and our livestock. The impact over those three days included loss of sleep, continuous monitoring of the fire conditions, loss of power, road closures, which resulted in the need to be self-sufficient. The area burnt out by the Delburn complex fires in 2009 overlaps 21 of the 33 wind turbines. I have concerns about the installation of a battery storage facility adjacent to a plantation, considering the current situation of a fire occurring at Murrabool. The noise impact is an unknown entity. Current modelling is inconclusive. Flinders University are currently undertaking a study into the impact of wind turbine noise on those living in rural communities. I hold deep concerns of the noise impact to sleep, health, and to the level of amenity on our properties. The exclusion of noise or emissions from wind turbines from the Public Health and Wealth Being Act has reduced the local council ability to address breaches which occur. The impact vegetation removal will have on endangered, threatened and existing native flora and fauna is irreversible. Clearing of native vegetation along the Streslecki Highway will introduce voids in the existing wildlife corridors. The Delburn Wind Farm proposal will have a detrimental impact on the Streslecki Alpine BioLink project. The project vision is to conserve and restore habitat connections. I am firm in my belief of the effects of climate change and our responsibility to mitigate our environmental footprint. This proposal will have an ongoing and lasting impact on my family. I hope this council will listen to the concerns raised by residents when making any future decisions regarding the inappropriate location of Delburn Wind Farm and Terminal Station. I thank you for the opportunity to speak. No worries. Thank you. Um, Councillors, do I have any questions? No. No, thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much, Jackie. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm just writing a note down before I forget. Now, hang on, I've got you down again, Dan. Were you registered to speak twice? You need to unmute yourself. (laughs) Caught me unawares. Look, I I had a good go last time, so I'm not going to go again. So, you know, (laughs) can't apologise too much. Sorry. (laughs) That's okay. Well, Actually, wasn't your fault. It was mine because I I wasn't listening um, yeah. to the others. But in in fairness of what we've asked the others, are you able to tell us roughly how far you live from the the sites? Well, I, I live in Trogan. 
Yeah. But you know, as you know, I've been keenly aware of uh, our duty to transition um, our community to renewables for many years, and this is why I'm involved mainly. No worries. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, now Jeanette Moore, is she here, please? Uh, Jeanette, are you here, please? Oh, no, sorry, I've just got a. I haven't been, people have been sending me messages and I've been trying to concentrate on, on what people have said, but I have got in the chat that she's left, um, so she won't be here now. Um, Mr Piacenti, have we got anyone who was supposed to be here that is um, now we do, here? We do, Madam Mayor, so I think Louise Gilmore is up next, going back to the top of the list. Yes. Yep. I think I've only got one other speaker after that, which is, uh, I'm sure I'll get the pronunciation right, but Myra. 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 Wilson. Yep. Myra. Yep. No worries. Louise. Okay. All right, Louise. Louise Gilmore. Are you here, please? Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. The message I had from my team was she was, but I had there was a Louise's iPhone on my list. I'm not quite sure if she's still there. I'll just check again. Karen might know if that was her. I did message Louise, but I got nothing back. So I'm just, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it just seems to, yeah. Okay. So then what was, who was the other one? Oh, sorry, Tessa, are you asking a question? And ooh, hang on. You need to unmute yourself. Oh, in, there we in go. Fairness, yes, am I allowed to speak? Now, hang on. Had you registered? I thought I had. So, and under Tessa? Yes, just for my own family. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, I don't know what's happened there. Um Right. In fairness, I will ask everyone here, are we happy for Tessa to speak as she thought she registered? Yep. Okay. No yep, worries. Absolutely. No absolutely. Worries. Tessa's been in you, yes, from Mayor. the start. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Thank you, no Madam worries. Mayor and everybody. Um, I'm Tessa Library, a Yanar resident. Um, we moved here in 2010 after the Black Saturday bushfires mm. in King Lake where we fought. Um, I'm within about 2.5 kilometres, I think, on the map for the um, to be affected by the wind turbines. I found it very difficult actually to find information when I first heard whispers a couple of years ago and thought, oh yeah, you know, it's you know, good renewable energy. And we actually have a um, a holiday house down at Tura, which is quite close to the wind turbines. Mm. And so I have personal experience of what they do sound like. Now, keep in mind, these turbines are actually a quarter of the size of the proposed ones for the Streslecky Ranges. So when you're talking 250 metres or a quarter of a kilometre high in the air above the ranges, that is quite enormous compared to the Tura ones. They're pretty much babies, but if you drive underneath them, they look enormous anyway. Now, we, it, I wouldn't actually like to live there full time because, yes, it is like... Um, an aeroplane going over, a, a jumbo jet aeroplane. That's the noise. And it's a uh, whoosh, whoosh. It's an uh, intermittent noise. When they're turned off, which they have to be turned off when it gets very windy because they will just spin off and, and break. And um, it is very noticeable when they're not off, uh, when they're not going. So, um, you know, you. Yes, it's a white no noise generally, but you can, when it's a quiet area that we live in, you will really notice it. So that's our first point. Um, the other point um, is the height and the, the flicker and the shadowing uh, because we live on the east side of these um, proposed 
wind towers. So when the sun sets behind them, there will definitely be long shadows as the sun goes down. You only have to look at your trees in your paddock to see how long a small tree stretches when the sun goes down low. So there will be flicker and all that sort of thing. Now, our firefighting experience, um, had we left, we probably would have just been burnt in the fires at King Lake. We had to stay and fight them. Um, the flames were 700 metres high in the sky. We actually, we thought, and being on a hill as King Lake was, it acts like a chimney and and if there's a fire, um, it, it actually, you know, everyone knows it creates their, its own wind, but it it goes up a hill much quicker than down a hill. So it's, it is a very real and dangerous um, thing to have them all along the Streslecki range, um, especially when they're spanning between three different council areas. So Borbor, Latrobe Valley and South Gippsland. Now there's only like, you know, a couple in the, the outside of Latrobe Valley, but to me, I think that this is just going to open the floodgates and we will eventually have uh, wind turbines, you know, going around all over um, our beautiful countryside. And yes, we moved down here after Black Saturday as um, a release. My husband's father and, and mother emigrated here from Malta um, back in 1949. Um, my father-in-law is now 93. He worked at Yalorn, so um, coal industry. What, where, where I'm having trouble and a struggle with, yes, I'm not denying climate change or anything that's cyclic, but coal is being sold by Australia to countries overseas now they can burn it as dirtily as they like so what's the conscience there so for us you know having to make the the wind turbines they use coal in the man manufacture of them and silicon um, and all sorts of other non-recyclable components and you have to have a backup. Yes, they've got lithium batteries. They have a very short lifespan as well. So to me, I just think it is a totally inappropriate sighting because of the bushfire um, threat, because they could not bomb with something 250 um, metres high in the air. Any water bombing plane, the water would evaporate the heat of the fires, 1,500 okay. degrees it was. So, in, all right, in a, my time's up, all right. If, <laughs> so, if so you obviously can wind it up in, in a sentence, that'd be great. Oh, that's okay. I'm, I'm finished. Basically, we're opposing it and we think it's a totally inappropriate site. We're not opposing it in general, just uh, its sighting is wrong. No worries. Okay. Now... Councillors, do I have any questions, please? No. Okay, so where are we at, um, Mr. CEO, with? Um, I did check the participants. I don't think there was any others who had um, registered registered to speak there. Um, Sorry. Sorry to cut in, guys. This is Louise. No, it isn't. Oh. Sorry, we did ask before whether that was Louise. We yeah, apologise for Sorry. not jumping in. We oh, actually had some okay. screaming children in the background. Uh, we'll get connection now. I get that. No worries. All right, before Louise, who's got a very deep voice, um, speaks, um, Melissa, oh, there you go. You've got a beard too. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to know if there could be a call across the room because I know some people just missed the application. Oh, okay. Um, and yes, I thought because we allowed someone earlier, it might. Yes, all right. Curious. That's fine. Thank you. Ta. Okay. Louise. Well, is it Louise or her husband who's going to speak? But if you want to unmute yourself, that would be great. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, I am speak. My name is Sam and my wife is Louise. So Louise grew up um, in Driffield, which is in very close proximity, roughly 
um, two and a half kilometres from the nearest, or even less, I think, isn't it? Two kilometres from the nearest turbines. Um, Louise and I are both strongly against the, the project. Uh, first of all, we, I grew up in Tasmania um, and I spent my life travelling uh, the west coast of Tassie um, and really enjoying living up, uh, growing up in that area, surfing, exploring um, nature and immersing myself in that sort of lifestyle. Um, a few, about 10 years ago, the, the Woolnorth Wind Farm was built um, and they actually built a really large wind farm on the west coast there. Um, and those turbines, I believe, are, they're going to be smaller than what the Delburn wind farms are. But when you do get close to them, I can vouch for what, I didn't catch the lady's name, but the Tura wind turbines, the noise is exactly how she described. Um, and I know people are saying there's the white noise and we only animals can hear them. But in actual fact, when you're there, you can clearly hear the sound and it, it is a quite an um, aggravating noise. Um, so I would hate to think that, you know, I'm lying in my bed at night and I can hear the noise of those turbines. Um, there's also the consideration of the impact it's going to have on the native vegetation. Um, it says in the proposal that a certain number of hectares have to be cleared for these turbines to be built. Um, and I do think that's going to have a direct impact on, you know, the native animals, particularly the koalas um, and the bird life. Uh, just on the farm that we're living in, in Driffield here, there's daily, um, you know, native parrots, uh, magpies, um, finches. Um, so I do think that that is going to have a direct impact, obviously the size of the blades and also the removal of native habitat. Um, I, the, the family, Louise's family had to directly fight off and defend their property um, in the 2000 and 14. 14 fires um, and it, it basically resulted in them literally uh, putting their life at risk to defend their property, their livestock. Um, due to the demand on the CFA and the fire services, they could not actually get um, help from the CFA or the fire brigade. So it left them to sort of fend for themselves. And I think with these turbines being put in place, you, you can't say that that's not going to impact the ability for a aircraft to enter the, the area and drop um, water on the fires. I think that's, and road crews. you know, um, definitely something that needs to be considered. Um, the There's also, I know it is in, inconclusive, people are saying that it does, it's proven not to cause uh, mental health problems and sleep disruption, but that, that's still inconclusive. There's many, many studies and peer reviewed articles that exist stating that people li that live within, you know, a kilometre or more of these or three kilometres of these turbines, there's a large amount of the populations that report sleep disturbance and issues with mental health. And that's, you know, um, that seems to be more than a coincidence. So the World Health Organisation also mentions that there is a potential for um, these turbines impacting on people's wellbeing. Oops. I'm looking Sorry. at you speaking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I, I muted myself because I'm at home and I've got a dog who's a really great watchdog and was barking. So I muted myself. Um, no worries. She's fine now. Um, now, have you got much more to go because your time is, is up? No, I just thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, we'll say that we have moved my family. We were living on the Monty Peninsula. We've moved to the area in the last year. Um, we are on the farm at the moment, which is, as I said, two k's from the, the wind turbines. I want it the same sort of upbringing that my wife has had on the farm, a, pe a peaceful and tranquil lifestyle. We don't want to have to the, the um, natural beauty of the area ruined and also the impact on, you know, our own health and well-being in terms of feeling secure in our homes. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's, that is all okay. for me. Thank you. No worries. Thank you very much. Councillors, do I have any questions, please? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, do we have any other speakers? Yes. Uh, we do have a request. Uh, Caroline Parker, I think, is on the line. Who would like to speak, Madam Mayor? 
No worries. Well, in fairness, everyone's happy for this because, yep, yeah, no worries. Okay, Carolyn. Uh, thank you, Sharon, Stephen, um, and councillors for this opportunity. Um, just wanted to declare that I am a, an occupier of a property that has seven seven turbines within three kilometres of our of the farm. Um, firstly, and I also want to declare that I'm a member of the Stresleke Community Alliance. And with that, I implore councillors to view the Stresleke Community Alliance website to explore how this team is supporting the community in opposing the appropriate in, the inappropriate proposal. This wind farm thought bubble needed to burst a long time ago, citing the largest onshore turbines in the world across a designated extreme fire risk site next to the same location as the Hazelwood mine fires and Delburn complex fires is obscene. It's clearly the right location for a pair of entrepreneurs to engage with a foreign major landholder, quickly gain state approval, sell off the rent certificates to a foreign corporation and move on to the next patch of land sprinkled with remnant native vegetation, a few straggling koalas and an inconvenient alpine to ocean biolink corridor right in the middle of it. Cheap access to transmission lines and cheap engagement with one major landholder is the sole reason why this location has been chosen. The proposed site for this pilot project is wrong. Are the people of La Trobe City Council and their representatives and their representatives prepared to be the guinea pigs of this experiment. The developers have a well-known history in the industry and so do their consultants, Marshall Day Acoustics and Sonus. Just look up Ball Hills, Stockyard Hill, Warbra compliance issues. How can the reports be trusted and accepted? It took complaints from myself and another person from Delt to pull down incomplete EPBC reports and surveys to then have them be resubmitted. The surveys weren't even complete, yet they were submitted for federal approval. The proposal is too risky for ratepayers, too risky for, for the community, too risky for La Trobe City Council. How will the council protect ratepayers? Growth corridors will be stifled. What's going to happen to Yanar? What's happening to the current strategy in this township? Does the Trobe City Council have a position on the reduction of rates in, due to property devaluation? Why are so many for sale signs going up in Ballara, Dullamurla, Narrakan, Griffield? Who wants to move to the area? Basic economics is going to conclude what will happen to the prices. Has La Trobe City Council reviewed and accepted the battle ratings applied by fire risk consultants 12.5? How will La Trobe City Council navigate the risk of a toxic explosion impacting the community. Again, the poor siting of the battery plant is evident, particularly given the recent battery fire in the West. It was, it's three days into testing and the crews are still struggling, updated, have just put out the fire. This proposal is not a jobs, jobs bonanza for the Valley. Osmi stated to me in writing, there'd be 24 ongoing jobs. When pressed, they said to me it was a desktop analysis. The project FTE, numbers have risen since Osmi's initial ongoing jobs were quoted. And that is despite the turbine numbers going from 53 to 33. How is this? There've been several community surveys. In fact, no one's mentioned the surveys. Thank you, Steve. Oh. One in Ballara, one All in- right. Sorry, Caroline. Have you got much more to go because your time is up? Two sentences. If you're really quick. Yep, so the two surveys, one in Ballara, 75% of residents did not support the, um, the wind farm proposal and the recent one in Yanar, which was 80%. There is no social license. And thank you very much for the opportunity. No worries. Um, okay, councillors, do I have any questions at all? No, now we've had no other requests to speak. Yes, we have. No, man. Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Sorry, Trevor was, <laughs> I had a Trevor. message from somebody else that Trevor, I didn't get a message back from Trevor, but I was just about to ask. It looks like he does want to speak. Yeah. Trevor, uh, you wish yeah, to I speak? 
I tried, I tried to submit a speaker request through the Eventbrite system, which is rather obscure, but um, if there's opportunity, I'd like the opportunity to speak, please. Yes, you may. We've given others, so yes, you may. Thank you. Um, I'll first declare my, my, I live in Ballara South. I've lived here for 40 years. Um, I'm 10.3 kilometres from the nearest turbine at, uh, um, nearest turbine, but I'll probably be able to see one or two from my hill. Um, I'm a member of Strzaki Sustainable Futures, and I have represented them on the uh, Delburn Wind Farm Consultative Committee. Um, I'm a member of the Latrobe Valley Sustainability Group. For what it's worth, I'm a member of and convener of the local Gippsland Greens. Nobody else has declared their political alliances. <laughs> anyway, um, my perspective on the Delburn Wind Farm is a, is a global one. I've read the IPCC report, the 1.5 degree report recently. I'm aware of the IEC report, which suggests that uh, on, on the pathway to zero carbon, uh, carbon dioxide emissions by 2050. I've read material from all sorts of sources beyond zero emissions and lots of others. And I know that the only hope for Australia and the world to avoid a climate Armageddon, you know, more than two and a half degrees climate change is to rapidly decrease our carbon emissions. I also understand that the technologies already exist. Solar, wind, uh, batteries, hydro, pumped hydro, they're there. And um, the market has declared that that's the way to go. Already, it's cheaper to produce new uh, electricity and uh, production systems using these, these technologies than it is to run the old coal-fired power stations. Um, Kerry Schott, the chair of the ECB, the, the uh, um, organising group for, for uh, setting up rules in Victoria, said that uh, without action to preserve them, quote, coal companies are going broke and they're likely to retire before their technical lives end. It's my view that governments at all levels owe it to their constituents, and that includes the Latrobe City, to be, cons to be honest about the changes that are coming rapidly and inevitably, uh, and to act to educate the community and facilitate adaptations to changes. The Trade Valley without coal will be different to what it is now or was in the past. It'll have different economics, different employment profiles, different industries, different culture. Um, and these changes, like climate change, will happen much more quickly than most people expect or are ready for. Not everyone is comfortable with change, but we cannot avoid them. The Delwell Wind Farm is a great example of how change can happen. It makes use of complementary wind profiles to Western Victoria, where most of our Victorian wind farms are at the moment. Um, it makes, dual, makes good use of innovative, innovative dual use of pine plantations. It'll generate enough power to power all the houses in the Latrobe Valley when it's running. Um, it'll provide much needed employment and constr and during construction and ongoing. And you can argue how many and all that sort of stuff I know. Crucially, the wind farm will save 640,000 tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions every year that would have been produced if we keep producing that electricity with a coal-fired power station. Um, it's critical, I think, for, for the Latrobe Valley to, to start making up for the vast amount of CO2 that's been added to the atmosphere in the, in, in the last 90 years. Um, we're now experiencing globally all sorts of nasty uh, transactions, you know, fires in California, record temperatures in, in Canada, um, wildfires in all across the, the, the um, Mediterranean at the moment, in Siberia, in California, uh, in Australia, of course, um, you know, melting ice caps, you know, you name it. There are many more than, than, I, than, than can be listed here now. Um, Latrobe Valley uh, wind, uh, windstorm and, and rain recently much more than, than, than normally would be expected. Um, so, you know, there are lots of signs out there that we've got to start doing this and we've got to do it quickly. As no such, worries. from my um, point of view- Trevor, have you got here. much more to go because your time's up, please? One sentence. Okay. The Trove Valley has a moral responsibility to lead the Trove Valley away from the path of global heating that it's been on for the last 90 years towards a rapidly approaching new future of zero greenhouse emissions. Supporting the Delburn Wind Farm is one thing you can do to signify that you are, you are on the path to this transition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillors, do I have any questions of Trevor, please? 
Nope. All right. Thank you very much, Trevor. Now, I... Oh. Um, we were trying to wrap this meeting up by uh, 7.30 so we could all have our dinner if those that haven't had it. Um, but there was uh, one, one final uh, person who had asked through the chat, Madam Mayor, which was Cindy Van Eady. I think if I pronounced that correctly. So, Van Eady, thanks, Cindy. Um, so if you're happy to have Cindy speak, Madam Mayor, and then we can probably wrap it up from there in terms of next steps. Well, in fairness, we've let others, so it wouldn't be fair not to let Cindy. So... Um, Far away, Cindy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I live in Yanar on Creamery Road. I actually abut right next door to the pine plantation. Um, I am a member of the SCA and I do attend on the committee with the SCA um, just to declare my interest. Where I live, I will have four turbines measuring 1.1 kilometre, 1.3 kilometres, 1.7 kilometres, 1.9 kilometres, not from the boundary of my home, but measured to the middle of my home. The buffer zone is taking up the front half of my property. If I wish to build there, I cannot because it will be under the one kilometre mark from a turbine. Mr Marriott graciously said to me that if I put in a permit, plan, building permit, he would give me permission to build there. I didn't know that he sat on the council's permit building permissions board. Around that, I will have another 15 more turbines between three to four kilometres from my home. When they're talking about native vegetation to be cleared and I hear people saying that there's no biodiversity, I walk in the pine plantation regularly and I see lace monitors running up trees and across the road, wallabies, kangaroos, kookaburras, wedge-tailed eagles, white-bellied sea eagles, which I, I believe are actually endangered, and at night time, we have owls that come and sit on the post outside the kitchen, catching the bugs off the window. Um, I'm very concerned about electromagnetic interference with radio communications, telephone, TV, internet, um, and CB radios. We depend on those. We depend on them. I have no landline. I am dependent on my broadband, my NBN, for my contact with the phone and with the outside world, and particularly if there is some sort of... Um, Fire crisis, we need our phones. We need to be able to communicate to the outside world. What does it mean for flight crew flying through this area if the electromagnetic interference actually interferes with radio communications, with CB radios? What happens to our fire crews on the ground trying to relay messages back to base or to the air control above the area? Um, that is something that I'm very, very concerned about. We talk about wind farms. Um, supplying all this energy to all the, you know, enough to do the whole of this area. Majority of the wind farms tend to operate at 33% capacity of what they're built to do. Now, that's a very low number. If I was going to invest in something and my return was 33%, I tell you what, I'd be out of there pretty quickly. When you look at Bald Hills, there is actually an app that you can look up and it shows you in real time all of the wind farms in Australia what capacity they're running at. Bald Hills runs at 21 to 24% capacity on a windy day. Uh, California, one of the fires that started there recently actually started from a wind turbine that caught on fire and the propeller flew out onto the ground while it was still burning. So it actually started a fire. So I, I have quite a few concerns around the Dalburn wind farm being forced right on top of my home. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all I have to say. Thank you. No worries. Thank you very much, Cindy. Councillors, do I have any questions of Cindy, please? No. No, thanks. Thank you. Okay. We have no other people wishing to speak? No. All right. Look. Oh, pardon? Sorry, yeah, I'd like to speak if I can. Um, yeah. <laughs> No worries, Paul. In, as I said, in, in fairness, we've led others. So I, I take it that, yes, you can speak. Um, and I would suggest that's the last one. If anyone else wishes to speak, can they let um, our CEO know now so we can know if we're wrapping it up or not, please? Okay, Paul. You need to unmute yourself, though. 
<laughs> Sorry, can you hear me now? I can. Okay. Hi, my name is Paul Wallen. I'm a, a member of the Strezicki Community Alliance and I strongly object to the Darwin Wind Farm. I've, uh, I've lived locally in Yanar uh, for the last six years and moved to the area for the for the lifestyle with my uh, with my young family and wife and my wife had um, she grew up on a family farm in Driffield uh, and kind of resided there for most of her 36 year life and um, we have grave concern for the um, for our family and the community um, due to the Dublin wind farm being uh, being near our home and the adjoining family farm in Driffield uh, we were disappointed that we have not been advised or consulted with regarding the, the plan to build the enormous turbines so close to our homes and properties. When hearing of the proposal for the first time in the media only back in um, 2019, similar time that Daryl mentioned earlier, um, we've since done our own research and found some, some evidence of many frightening ne negative impacts that will, this will have on our family and friends in the community. We've spoken with the CFA, the Department of Water, Environment, Land and Planning, which is otherwise known as DELP, and the Civil Aviation Safety Authority, or CASA, amongst others regarding the proposed wind farm. We've been informed that the turbines being placed in the middle of HVB plantations will increase our risk of bushfire and impact on our safety each fire season. We've been told that the trees will be drier due to turbulence created around the turbines and a lower rainfall caused by the impact on the cloud around the turbines. This in turn will make them easier to burn. We have been impacted by fire from these plantations on multiple occasions in the past, as, as many people have mentioned tonight. Um, so this frightens us that if a fire does start, We've been informed that while the turbines are running, no aircraft will be able to enter the wind farm space due to turbulence created by the turbines. If the turbines are stopped and put into the Y position, which is unlikely on a day that energy demand is high, access will be limited due to obstruction of the turbines, smoke visibility, weather monitoring towers and wind due to the fire's own created weather. This is very distressing that we should be endangered even more than we already are just for financial gain for the likes of Osme or whoever the, um, the investors are that take on the wind farm. We've also been told that our insurance premiums will most likely increase as the fire risk increases. A recent, uh, just part of some additional research, but um, a recent wind farm proposal in Copton had been rejected by uh, Minister Richard Wynne, who um, is the planning minister for this same Dalbane wind farm. Due to its close proximity to, to an airport, uh, CASA have given evidence and stated that the turbulence created by the turbines travels 16 times the length of the rotor blades. Now, given the proposed Delburn turbines will be 250 metres high and the blades will be 90 metres long, this indicates no aircraft will be able to enter within at least three kilometres of the wind farm above and around 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A major concern for this is that if a member of our family has a major emergency, medical condition, medical condition or accident on our property or the roads surrounding the air ambulance, will be unable to enter this space and assist ambulance road crews. Okay, now, Paul, your time is up. Did you have much more? I, I do have a little bit more, maybe, maybe one more minute. Um, can you squeeze it to 30 seconds? Yeah, I can. All right. Uh, so having three small children, we're very distressed that our right to emergency health care is being taken away due to its proposal. There's a population of 6,000 people in the surrounds, roughly, um, and a wider community that travels on these roads through, the, through in and around the plantations. Uh, we all know that um, the Legge Highway has, has numerous accidents, so um, inadequate access for the likes of aircraft and emergency services is of grave concern. Um, just quickly, um, there's a, a large population of beautiful wedge-tailed eagles uh, in the area and wind farms are notorious for eradicating entire populations of bird and bat life as soon as they are operational. And the last, last thing I'd like to add is there's proposed employment of 25 ongoing jobs for this wind farm. Now, 
Peter Marriott uh, came to our, visit our house uh, directly and indicated that these turbines will be operated remotely from Germany. Uh, so the, the local jobs in the area will not be 25 local ongoing jobs. They're most likely to be 25 jobs or of some, some amount close to that from another country. Not okay, much. thank you very much, Paul. Councillors, do I have any questions, please? Nothing for me. No worries. Okay, look, um, I think we've been very fair, letting both sides have their their say. Um, but as you know, what, it doesn't matter what we say. At the end of the day, we will be treated as a submission like all of you. Um, we will have a, um, a special council meeting to consider these and, and put a, a submission in. So you can see all of that. That'll be all above board. There, there's no hiding any of it. So that will, um, that will occur before the end date, which is the 18th of August. Um, but look, I thank you and I really encourage you all, if you really um, feel um, either way, to put your submissions in, please. Um, and then, as you know, the planning minister will make a decision, but, you know, have your say. This is important all, all the way around for our our community so please have your say i thank you all for being respectful um and as i say i do apologize for the glitch i did when i wasn't looking at the um ceo um, so i do apologize for the, that but you know thank you very much for your time and hopefully we can all come together and make wise decisions so thank you for attending and we will see you, no doubt, at the special council meeting. Thank you very much.